and Frank forward. And Fred, Frank kept a diary from June 12, 1942 to August 1st, 1st, 1944. Initially, she wrote it strictly for herself. Then one day in 1944, Garrett Wilkinstein, a member of the Dutch government in exile, announced on a radio broadcast from London that after the war he hoped to collect eyewitness accounts of the suffering of the Dutch people under the German occupation, which could be made available to the public. As an example, he specifically mentioned letters and diaries. Impressed by this speech, Anne Frank decided that when the war was over, she would publish a book based on her diary. She began rewriting and editing her diary, improving on the text, omitting passages she didn't think were interesting enough, and adding others from memory. At the same time, she kept up her original diary. In the scholarly work, The Diary of Anne Frank, the critical edition, 1989, Anne's first unedited diary is referred to as a version A, to distinguish it from her second edited diary, which is known as the version B. The last entry in Anne's diary is dated August 1st, 1944. On August 4th, 1944, the eight people hiding in the secret annex were arrested. Neep Guys and Bev Volsko, the two secretaries working in the building, found Anne's diary strewn all over the floor. Neep Guys tucked them away in a desk drawer for safekeeping. After the war, when it became clear that Anne was dead, she gave the diaries unread to Anne's father, Otto Frank. After a long deliberation, Otto Frank decided to fulfill his daughter's wish and publish her diary. He selected material from versions A and B, editing them into a shorter version later referred to as the version C. Readers all over the world know th this is the diary of a young girl. In making this choice, Otto Frank had to bear several points in mind. To begin with, the book had to be kept short so that he would fit in with a series put out by the Dutch publisher. In addition, several passages dealing with Anne's sexuality were omitted. At the time of the diary's initial publication in 1947, it was not customary to write openly about sex, and certainly not in books for young adults. Out of respect for the dead, Otto Frank also omitted a number of unflattering passages about his wife and the other residents of the secret annex. Anne Frank, who was 13 when she began her diary and 15 when she was forced to stop, wrote without reserve about her likes and dislikes. When Otto Frank died in 1980, he willed his daughter's manuscripts to the Netherlands State Institute for War Documentation in Amsterdam. Because the authenticity of the diary had been challenged ever since its publication, the Institute for War Documentation ordered a thorough investigation. Once the diary was proved beyond a shadow of a doubt to be genuine, it, <clears throat> it was published in its entirety along with the results of the exhaustive study. The critical edition contains not only versions A, B, and C, but also articles on the background of the Frank family, the circumstances surrounding their arrest and deportation, and the examination into Anne's handwriting, the document and the materials used. The Anne Frank Farms, Anne Frank Foundation in Basel, Switzerland, which, as Otto Frank's legal heir, had inherited his daughter's copyrights, then decided to have a new expanded edition of the diary published for general readers. This new edition in no way affects the integrity of the old ones, originally edited by Otto Frank, which brought the diary and this message to millions of people. The task of compiling the expanded edition was given to the writer and translator Miriam Pressler. Otto Frank's original selection has now been supplemented with passages from Anne's A and B versions. Miriam Pressler's definitive edition, approved by the Anne Frank Fonds, contains approximately 30% more material and is intended to give the reader more insight into the world of Anne Frank. In 1998, the existence of five previously unknown pages of the diary came to light. Now, with the permission of the Anne Frank Fonds in Basel, a long passage date of February 8, 1944 has been added to the end of the already existing entry of that date. A short alternative to the entry of June 20, 1942, has not been included here because a more detailed version of it is already part of the diary. Furthermore, in line with recent findings, the entry of November 7, 1942 has been moved to October 30, 1943. For more information, the reader is referred to the revised critical edition. In writing her second version, B, Anne invented pseudonyms for the people who would appear in her book. She initially wanted to call herself Anne Alice and later Anne Robin. Otto Frank opted to call his family by their own names and to follow Anne's wishes with regard to the others. Over the years, the identity of the people who helped the families in the secret annex has become common knowledge. In this edition, the helpers are now referred to by their real names, as they so justly deserve to be. All other persons are named in accordance with the pseudonyms in the critical edition. The Institute for War Documentation has arbitrarily assigned initials to those persons wishing to remain anonymous. The real names of the other people hiding in the secret annex are the Van Pels family, 
Augustin Van Pels, Herman Van Pels, Peter Van Pels, called by Anne in her manuscript Patronal, Hans and Alfred Van Dan, and in the book Petroleum Herman and Peter Van Dan, Fritz Puffer, born April 30th, 1889 in Geisen, Germany, called by Anne in her manuscript, and in the book Albert Dussel, the reader may wish to bear in mind much of the edition is based on B version of Anne's diary, which she wrote when she was around 15 years old. Occasionally, Anne went back and commented on a passage she had written earlier. These comments are clearly marked in this edition. Naturally, Anne's spelling and linguistic errors have been corrected. Otherwise, the text has basically been left as she wrote it, since any attempts at editing or clarification would be inappropriate in a historical document. I hope I will be able to confide everything to you, as I have never been able to confide in anyone, and I hope you will be a great source of comfort and support.